Hi guys, this is Marlon Nunes from Art Heroes. In the next tutorial, I'm going to explain you how to create hair using an IMMM brush inside of ZBrush. So let's get dive into it. So the first thing that I want to explain to you is how the IMMM brush is built by itself. So I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to just create a stroke so I can show you how it's already built. It. As you can tell, the root of the hair is already embedded inside of the sphere and then the tip of the hair is slimmer by itself. This hair is created using a elastic mode on, which means that I can reshape the curve without losing the shape of the hair. The next thing that you should know is how to smooth out the stroke without losing the shape of the hair. So right now I'm just going to draw a very regular line so that we get a very funky hair shape. If you hover your cursor over the stroke, you're going to notice that the cursor turns blue. So if you click on that stage and then hit shift, you will be able to smooth the curve, but the shape, the shape of the hair will be retained. This is very important because in some cases, meanwhile we create hair, hair tends to snap in very regular places, so it's very important we are able to smooth out certain areas or even the whole branch itself. Alright, so with this two knowledge, let's just dive into the hair. In order to work with an IMMM brush, we should always have a mesh without subdivisions. So I'm going just to duplicate my previous cat and I'm going to delete all the subdivisions levels. I'm going to rename it, so it's very obvious that this is the head that I'm going to use for the IMMM brush. The first thing that I like to do every time I work in here is focusing on the frontal hairline. This area is extremely important because it drives already the shape of the hair. So I'm going to create the first hair strand. That starts from the frontal hairline. So I'm going to create a new stroke. The good thing about this IMMM is that already is working with the elastic bolt on and it's going to already give me the option to retweak it after the initial stroke. So I can reshape it without losing the shape of the hair. Once you're uncompletely satisfied, I tend to delete the curve and maybe just with a move brush make some small tweaks. Now I'm going to move to the other side. So now I'm going to come back to the previous brush just by clicking again in the brush palette. Something very important about this character is that I was not using any reference. For me, it was more of an exploration work. So I'm going just to draw a stroke. I'm going to smooth it out to make sure that the shape is clean. And from there, I'm just going to tweak it and trying to get an initial shape that already gives me a clue where I, try sh where I should actually head into. So right now, I just keep orbiting around, trying to figure out where is actually the best solution here. And something I realized that I wanted some wind action. So if we want some wind action on here, normally in areas like for example the root, it should be already closer to the scalp. So I'm going to start already tweaking that, trying to make sure that it looks natural but also looks nice. To create the hair base mesh, we are just going to paint the mask on top of the head. The most important is that you are able to cover enough space so you can extract an initial shape. Once you are completely happy with the painted mask, you just have to go through subtools, extract and make sure you extract with zero thickness. Every time we do an extraction, the topology tends to be quite dense, so normally I like to go to C remeasure and play with the lowest values possible, so we have a clean topology from the beginning. This hair base mesh is only going to be used to create our IMMM brushes on top, so won't be used on the final render, but it's very important to have it clean from the beginning. Now I'm just going to give some thickness with panel looping and then with my move brush I'm just going to start already tweaking the shape so I can already see how it's going to be the final shape. This part of the process is quite simple and it's more about exploration also depending on the reference that you are using but it's very important that you are able to get an initial hair shape. So you are going to see that also in areas like at the front, front hair line and also areas like the region of the, of the hair are going to be even sculpting on top. And the reason why is that it's very important that even if it's just a base mesh, it's going to be looking already like here. So we have some initial clue about how our IMMM brushes are going to be looking like or how the stroke are going to be heading to. So at this stage, we already have our hair base mesh done. 
and it's time to already start adding more hair strands. So with the same MMM brush, we're going to already start playing with it. The process is exactly the, the same one that you could tell. We're going to create the strokes, we're going to smooth out if it's necessary, and then with the move brush, we're going to start replacing and also trying to make sure that it blends naturally, especially on the roots. The rule number one every time you're working here is to make sure that you focus on the major forms. By major forms, we are talking about the major volumes. So right now, if we're playing with MMM brushes, we need to make sure that we're working with very thick MMMs and we cover all the empty spaces. The, that initial hair base mesh is going to be deleted eventually, so it's very important that we cover all the spaces and they are not holes. So this first, this first part of the process is to just cover the area and make sure that these major volumes are happening. The second part of the process is focusing on the blending from those major volumes. Something very important is that even if we are playing with the IMM brushes, they probably are not going to blend together very well. So we should try to avoid intersections and also we need to make sure that the roots of the hair they are blending naturally. There are areas like for example long hair where you, we are going to have different regions of the hair, left and right. So we need to make sure that the roots are happening and they are blending naturally. I just keep orbiting around trying to make sure that those intersections are not happening and the volumes are happening nicely. This part of the process tends to be the slower part, since we are blocking out the major forms. So feel free to take your time, don't, don't try to rush up, as this is going to drive already the most important look of the hair. Now I'm going to start be focusing on the back side of the character. So for that I'm going to create just one single stroke, try to make sure that it's simple enough and then I'm going to make some duplicates of it. The reason why is because most of the hair from the back tends to have some very similar shape. So after making all the duplicates, I'm just going to start reshaping as a group and also individually to make sure that I have enough break, but also those volumes are happening also on the back. I still feel there are some areas that are not covered, so I just keep creating some few hair branches to make sure that I cover all these empty spaces. Something that I tend to do is always playing with polygroups. The reason why I can play with polygroups is that you can isolate hair branches by itself. So in some cases it's very important, because it's not always you can access the hair branches very easily in the sculpt but you can also do it just by a polygroup. Also that is very important, it's already giving some color information. So I knew that this girl was going to be blonde, so I just tried to already give that look, and that is already going to start giving me some clue how the hair should be looking like. Once you are completely done with the major forms, is where you can already start making the breakups. So for that, using the same brush, I'm just going to play with a very small size brush, and then just adding the flyaways. This is going to give the nice and realistic look. And this is probably the part of the process that you are going to enjoy the most, since the major hair is already done, and you are just pretty much just giving some life to the hair. So at this stage, definitely I don't play with any reference, I just try to make sure that it's looking good, and also the forms kinda go in the win action that I was trying to aim for at the beginning. As always, every single new brush, any single new IMMM brush that you place, make sure that it blends naturally. So take your time to even smooth it out, also with the move brush, try to blend the roots and make sure there are no funk intersections. I keep orbiting around, trying to make sure that I understand which areas should be covered or not. At this point, as you can tell, the hair base mesh is always hidden, as it's not completely necessary. Now I'm just going to add some small strands 
just to give the, the final break of the hair. So I really hope you like this tutorial. If you have any comments or any suggestions, just let us know and give us a comment in this video. We will always kindly reply you. Alright guys, so thanks for watching.